welcome to A Little Watercolor. I'm going to show you today what you can do with 72 little tiny pieces of paper. We've taken one full sheet of watercolor paper, 22 by 30, cut it up into 72 pieces, and away we go. By working on such a little surface, you can work with no pressure, just, just play, just have fun. The exercises that we're doing today are fun, quick, easy, and you're encouraged to experiment. If you've painted before, I hope you get some new ideas and encourage you to try things you haven't tried before. If you've never painted before, this is just a really good place to start and no pressure. You can just play, throw things away, color over them, use them as bookmarks, or you can even frame them, whatever you feel like. All right, let's start out with the bare basics. What I'm going to show you first is how to tape paper. Now that sounds really, really simple, but there are some things you should keep in mind. I've got quarter inch masking tape, quarter inch masking tape, and half inch masking tape. Don't go any larger because you're gonna lose too much of your paintable surface. I'm going to take this tape and run it flush with that edge. And make sure you press your tape down firmly. So I'm going to take my spritzer and juice up my palette a little bit. Just get a little water in there. And let's start. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to begin by taking clear water and wetting the surface. And I am wetting about almost three quarters of the way down, and I'm wetting a, the bottom part. And you probably can't see that very well. And I do have a sample. This is just shows you where I've wet the paper with clear water, just to give you an idea of what, what there is there. But I've got this in clear water. So now I'm going to take a nice sky color and quickly drop that in there and let that mix. As soon as it hits that dry edge, it's going to quit moving. And now I'm going to drop a tiny bit of that in the bottom. I like to have the color of my sky in my foreground because it is reflected light. I think they need to be friends. Land and sky. Speak to each other. Be friends. A little bit of purple in here. And I'm just going to let that mingle a little bit. Now that's pretty wet. So I'm going to set that over here and I'm just going to start another one. Eh, maybe I won't dry brush on that one. But I would like to pull out a moon and that I will do. And let's go here. What if you change your mind? I'm going to pick up some more pigment and do that. So you do have some wiggle time here. You do have some play time pulling out shapes. So you can see, you could really get into some designing with that. But for this little piece, I don't want to. So that guy's leaving. All right, for fun on this one, let's just add a little sprinkle of salt. The salt you add while it's wet and depending on the wetness of the paper, the amount of pigment you have in it, on the kind of pigment, the kind of salt, how dry it is where you are, and any other number of factors will affect how that salt works. And you can use it as much or as little as you like. I'm going to take my palette knife again and come across this piece. I'm going to come right across there and carve out something like that. If the paint is too wet, it's going to run back into the pigment, into the white parts. And if it's too dry, it won't move at all. So play with the timing on these. It's just kind of fun to see what you can come up with. And this does take practice. It's a nice, nice little tool. I really like using it. So a few things happening in there. I pushed the salt around down here, but I can see it's already starting to take some effect up here. So I'm going to set that piece aside for now. I'd like to show you a few examples of these now. 
All right, this is a piece very similar to what we did before. Dry brush, lifted moon, scratch out, but a lot of sparkle in this one. Here's another piece, big high contrast. Um, just stayed with the blues, monochrome, and kept it nice and fresh. Be, beware of your shapes. You want to alter them a little bit. Beware of where they are and in what relationship they have to each other. Small, medium, this could have been a little more medium, or this could have been a little larger. Another example, same type of thing. Simple, simple landscape. Less is more. Here's a couple more examples of lifting and leaving this as a dry brush area. In all of these three examples that I'm going to show you, they're very similar, but I want you to think about being bold with a contrary color. Another example, this might have been done with the tip of this brush, just pulling it along like that. It's a much more uniform dry brush stroke, but it's kind of fun. I don't know if I like this moon touching this edge. It's kind of falling off the page. A little bit of a painting rule there, but with all painting rules, you can go ahead and break them. I just want to point out on this one also while we're here, this is where the tape didn't quite cover. And I'm just going to take the blade of my knife and gently pick that off. And just alter that edge a little bit. You can still see it a tiny bit. I could work at that for a little while longer and just clean up that edge. So there's an option. And one last example of this. I really like how this bloomed out. It gives me something to look at. You know, this moon business on these could be certainly be smaller. Your choice, find whatever tool you can. I um, just realized here's my lip container. It makes a nice, nice shape there too. So anything you can think of, anything you can find, play with these, play with the colors. Play with the, the compositions, where things go, and just have fun with that. I'm coming back to these pieces. This is one of my triads, and this is just a plain old fun doodling exercise. Um, what I want you to do is just take your, your pen, whether it's a disposable like this one or a refillable like this one. I have a refillable because I use line so much, and uh, this is one of my very favorite tools. So I am going to begin somewhere, doesn't matter where, and you can think about drawing out something that you're familiar with or just following the lines that are in here and just sort of having fun with it. All right, I'm taking my fine liner and I'm gonna come into this piece. I think I'll, it's a random thing. You start anywhere you want. I'm gonna pick out this little area here and I am just doing whatever feels Okay. Just meant to relax. Now when you're working with this line, play with it a little bit. Let's, um, let's make it thick in some parts and thin and you can make it waggly or bumpy. Make little circles. Just Enjoy. It's really hard for me to talk while I'm doing this because you just want to slip away into this imaginative state. Think of this as a meditation. Think of all this painting time as healing, fun, a lovely, beautiful time for you just to enjoy yourself. And I am just going to continue to play with this. And as you're doing this, I think I said before, watch these gorgeous colors that happened. All these lovely, lovely, beautiful transitions happening there. 